something down inside of me. Tell me to go ahead. There's something down inside of me. Tell me to go ahead. There's something down inside of me. Tell me to go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I feel that spirit move on. Tell me to go ahead. I feel that spirit move on. Feel that spirit move on. Tell me to go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, there's something down inside of me. Tell me to go ahead. There's something down inside of me. Tell me to go ahead. There's something down inside of me. Tell me to go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I said there's something down. There's something down inside of me Telling me to go ahead There's something down inside of me Telling me to go ahead There's something down inside of me Telling me to go ahead Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead Well, I feel that spirit move on Telling me to go ahead I can feel that spirit move on Telling me to go ahead I feel that spirit move on. Tell me, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise his holy name. There's something down inside of me telling me to go ahead. There's something down inside of me telling me to go ahead. There's something down inside of me telling me to go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, they call us holy rollers, but that's all right. Well, they call us holy rollers, but that's all right. They call us. to me this Jesus I have the world didn't give it to me well the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away oh this toy I have the world didn't give it to me yeah. well now this joy I have well the world didn't give it to me this joy I have the world didn't give it to me well the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away the world didn't give it to me well now this song i sing the world didn't give it to me this song i sing the world didn't give it to me the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away oh yeah uh -huh. hallelujah yes Oh, it brought joy in my heart and joy in my soul, joy in my heart and joy in my 
soul. He brought joy in my heart and joy in my soul. And the half has never yet been told. Yes. Yes. He brought joy in my heart and joy in my soul. He brought joy in my heart and joy in my soul. And the half has never yet been told. It brought joy in my heart and joy in my soul. It brought joy in my heart and joy in my soul. And the half has never yet been told. It was joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of glory. Full of glory. It was joy unspeakable. It brought joy to my heart and joy to my soul. It brought joy to my heart and joy to my soul. And the half has never yet been told. One more time. It was joy unspeakable. Full of glory. Full of glory. Full of glory. It was joy unspeakable. How many believes when, when they gave their life to the Lord, it was joy unspeakable and full of glory? Amen. I like to say to anyone that gave their life to the Lord and it wasn't that way, you didn't give it to Him. Because there's that 180 degree change that is instantly made to them that have been born again. Amen. Amen. You know, the church really needs to get something down on the inside. You know, the church world has plenty on the outside. We have nice clothes and nice churches and nice lots of things. But I believe with God the most important thing is down on the inside. You know, in the modern church world today, people are so judgmental, and of course, naturally, they always judge people according to the outward appearance. And the Lord said not to judge men or women on the outward adorning. But let the adorning be on the heart. You know, God always deals with the heart. You remember when God called David and the prophet of God came and, and looked for all of them, that, that all, of David's, all of David's brothers and looked at them and said, Well, 
This is the one that looks like it ought to be, but the one that God chose was David. And God said that he chose David because of his heart. The Bible said from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you talk to people, they talk about what's in their heart. Can somebody say amen? We talk about what's in our heart. So you know what you're talking about, so you know what's in your heart. For the eye of the body is the light to the body. The eye is where the light goes through into the heart. goes all the way in. And we need that experience that will cause us to have something down on the inside. That love that passes all understanding. That love that causes us to love our neighbors ourselves. That love that causes us to follow Jesus regardless of the cost of the situation. Can somebody say amen? But the Bible said that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. For if God be for us, then who could be against us? We need to know that the heart needs to be right with God. The born again experience means that the heart has been made right with God. Many people have had a change in lifestyle, but they've not had a change in heart. They got the same old devilish heart they've always had. They've joined church. Some of them's even been baptized. As if that changed them. If baptism changed people like people thought, all these people go swimming all the time were done left and went to heaven like Elijah. Amen. I believe in water baptism, but I believe it's a waste of time you get saved. Baptizing the devil, when he comes back up, he's just a wet devil instead of a dry one. I believe in the born-again experience. Nicodemus come to the Lord and said, Lord, what must I do to be saved? He didn't say, follow me and I'll baptize you. He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. The power of Jehovah God that changes men's hearts and lives and causes them to take that 180 degree turn and to repent of their sins and to call upon the name of the Lord which is a strong tower in the righteous run to. When baptism comes is after we've been born again and we let the world know we've passed from death unto life and we go to the river and we're baptized. But going to the river and being baptized doesn't show the world anything. When you come out of the river, bless God, and your heart ain't been changed, everybody knows the only thing you did is you've become a religious follower. You know what people cost people that does that? They join church. A gentleman I worked with one time said, Oh, so-and-so joined church. I said, Let me tell you something. The first church member God ever had was Satan. As soon as God started the church, the devil joined it. Somebody said the devil can't get into church. Well, what are you doing in there? Satan's always there. The thief cometh but for to kill, to steal, and destroy. You must understand the devil, he, whenever Jesus came face to face with the devil, the devil always quoted him the word. But just half truth. The devil didn't try to talk him into cussing a big oat. The devil didn't try to get him to run down and, and drink a Budweiser. The devil used the word. He said, go ahead, Jesus, and jump off this mountain. You know the word said, lest at any time you fall, dash thy foot against the, soul, the, the stone, the angels will take care of you, old buddy. Ain't nothing going to happen. Go ahead and jump. The old suicide devil, wasn't it? But the Son of God was smarter than that. So he used the word. Jesus was the word. So we need to have that down on the inside. The church needs to understand, you know, we're all serving the same God and we're all going to the same heaven. You wouldn't think it the way we fuss and fight amongst one another, would you? You don't reckon there'll be a revolt up there in heaven, do you? I hardly doubt it. Somebody said there ain't going to be any stalls. I'll tell you what, the way some of us act and and we're, if we're going to heaven, God better put us in stalls or we'll be fighting for, for we can meet Gabriel or any of them. We'll be fighting for we can find John the Baptist. Amen. But see, I know it's not going to be that way. You know, the devil, he comes into the church and he tries to cause division. He causes us to quarrel and fuss among one another. But there's basics to being a Christian. It's just like there's basics in being married. There's basics. 
You have to take the vow, the wedding vows, and then the husband has to be a husband and the wife has to be a wife. It's just like being a Christian. Nicodemus asked the Lord for the basics. He said the first thing you have to do is be born again. So we must agree that we have to be born again. A change must take place in our life. And the scripture goes on to say that we cannot come to God unless the Spirit of the Lord draws us. I was talking to a lady minister yesterday and we were talking some about that. I said, you know what? The church world today has took the scripture that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And they just bring anybody into the church and they just say, save me Lord. And they just feel like they're saved. It doesn't work that way. If the Spirit of God has not dealt with our heart and called us to repentance, we cannot come to God except the Spirit draw us. You cannot get saved any time you take an ocean. Scripture has never taught you can get saved any time you take an ocean. The Spirit of the Lord must deal with your heart. You must hear the Word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Conviction power only comes from hearing the Word. You can't go to Dave's Lounge and think you're going to get any convicting power of God. You're going to have to go where the convicting power of God is. When I gave my life to the Lord, the minister got up and the convicting power of God was there so strong that I, that I felt that drawing power that drawed me to the altar and caused me to fall upon my knees and upon my face and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I didn't run up there and hug the pastor's neck and say, buddy, I think I'll become a member. Here's your 20 bucks. And today, we're living in a modern church world where people feel that that's all they need to do. Make friends with the pastor, give 20 bucks in the offering, hallelujah, and show up on work day and, and come to church every now and then, throw a few bucks in the offering, hallelujah, and everything's going to be all right. But that's not the way it is with God. What I like about God, you know the thing that people can't stand about God is it requires the same from everybody. It doesn't matter if your name's Rockefeller or Williams. He still requires the same. God requires Rockefeller to do exactly like he expects me to do. And the Bible said with God there is no shadow of turning. You cannot change God. You can change you. You can change me. But you can't change God. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He said, I am the Lord that changes not. And many in the church world today cannot accept God because God will not conform to their ways. We do things to keep us, to, that we try to dodge God's ways. I met a gentleman that I work with, and, and, and the first thing he wanted to talk about, he says, I can't stand preachers that ask for money. I said, brother, let me tell you why you can't stand preachers that ask for money. The Bible talks about a guy like you. I said, the Bible said that the love of money is the root of all evil. I said, I, I said, you love your money and you don't want nobody having none of your money. So you go off and talk about everybody that asks about money because you're afraid you may have to give some of your money. And I said, let me ask you something. Surely to God, you ain't stupid. You don't have to be a college educated whatever to know that the only way the church world can operate today is with money. God uses people. He's got a plan for his, uh, for his church to operate and for his people to operate just like the world has an operating system. You go down to Kroger's, you, I don't care how much you put in a buggy, if you ain't got no money, you, you ain't no use going through the checkout line. And it's the same with God. He had tithes and offerings, and that was the way that he, his plan was designed to pay for the things in the church and to take care of the needs of the people and all the needs that God had. And regardless of what anybody says, hallelujah, you may not agree with it, but it's still God's way. And many of you that watch the telecast, you think if you throw a buck in the offering every Sunday night, you've done God a great big favor. That's not the way it works with God. A man that loves his wife doesn't limit her to $2 a week to spend. One fellow at work asked me, said, uh, I heard him talking, and, and, and uh, I said, uh, He's talking about he give his wife an allowance. And I told him, I said, well, my wife wanted to know. Uh, she was getting a whole check. She wanted to know if there's something else she's supposed to be getting. When he's talking about allowance. See, when you love each other, it's no longer, it's not my money, it's our money. With me and my wife, everything is ours. It's not my truck, it's our truck. It's not her house, it's, it's our house. 
Everything is ours. Different papers and things that I filled out over the years and deeds and all this stuff, the lawyer would ask me, he'd say, now, Mr. Williams, do you want your wife put down on this wheel that uh, if something happens to whoever or whatever, that what rightfully yours will fall to her? What if you have a divorce? What about this? What about that? I said, look, brother, everything is ours. We're not, divorce is not in our vocabulary. We're not talking divorce. We love each other. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. That's the way we feel about it. So what are we going to do? Everything is ours. We're not trying to build a relationship that she has her own personal account and I have mine. We only have one account. On account of, we're not two anymore, but we're one. Amen? That's just the way it is. Some people have two or three accounts. They need to do one can trust each other. We're not that way. We're faithful to each other. God's faithful to us. How many knows we need to be faithful to the church? And if we're going to build a relationship with God, we must be faithful with Him. And if we're going to keep a relationship with our husbands and wives, we must be faithful to each other. Let us do things together. The Bible said when we come together, we are no longer two, but we're one flesh. Hallelujah. People do things to cause themselves to have problems, and they're not even aware that what they're doing is going to cause them to have problems later on. Hallelujah. But God, is looking for men and women that will get something down on the inside so that they can put something out on the outside, so that they can touch the hearts and lives of them that are round and about them. God is looking for you and I to take charge of our lives and to live according to the Word and to pass it on to our fellow men. God wants us to love one another. God wants us to work together. God wants our, all, every one of us Christians today, our goal should be the same. Our goal should be to see souls saved and to make heaven our home. Amen? We need to quit the bickering and the fussing and the fighting about denominations and what you believe and what I believe. Everybody's got an opinion, but let's go by God's word and let's forget about all the isms and the schisms and let's walk the straight and the narrow path and let's love one another. Can somebody say amen? Me and my wife, we've been married for 26 years, but we don't always agree on everything. But just because she uh, likes uh, eggs for breakfast and I want rice, I'm not going to divorce her. We love each other. And the Bible said that love hides a multitude of sins. The church needs to get the love. You know, we need to get the love to love one another. Pastors, we need to love one another. Lay members, we need to love one another. The church needs to love each other. Let's quit criticizing each other and let's start loving each other. God made us all apart. Apart. It would have been awful if Noah and his family would have got on the ship and got in a big fight and Noah throwed all of them off at him. Wouldn't it? That's the way we try to operate in the church world today. Brother, there's only one way. I don't care what you say, there's only one way with God. It's forgiveness and to love one another. A fellow brother that I know, he told me the other day that his wife had left him. Left him for another man. And he asked me the other day, he said, what do you think I ought to do, Brother Tony? I said, I'm going to tell you what I think God would do. I said, he'd go get her. And he'd forgive her. And he'd love her. And he'd work as hard as he could to keep the family together. I said, that's what God would do. I said, now what are you going to do? He told me, he said, Brother Tony, said she asked me if she could come back home. What should I do? I said, you should have grabbed her in your arms and said, woman, get in. I'm taking you home. I said, that's your wife. Those are your children. Forgiveness. I don't care what anybody says. God likes forgiveness and love. Amen. God wants us to love one another. To look over our faults and our failures. Quit being judgmental with each other. Hallelujah. Some sings better than others. Some can play this better than others. Some can do that better than others. Hallelujah. But we're all part of the body, and we all need each other. The right arm can't say, because I can write, and the left hand can't. It can't say, I'm going to cut you off. You can't do that. 
You need your left hand too. Maybe it drinks coffee better. Maybe if you're going to fall, you'll grab it with your left hand. What would happen is if you don't have your left hand, you'll fall, won't you? Love ye one another as Christ loved the church. I said, brother, let me tell you something. The Bible said, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And Christ gave his life. If men would love their wives like Christ loved the church, their women would never leave them. Amen? Love them, brothers. The Bible commands the woman to love the husband. We are to leave our mothers and fathers and to cleave to one another. And that's the way the church is. We're to leave the world and cleave to God. Hold on to the things of God. Hold on. We need to hold on to Jesus. And we need to work at loving one another. We need to work at that same goal that heaven's going to be our home. That we're going to love each other. And no matter what the devil says, the church is going to work together. We're going to build the kingdom of God. We're going to see our children saved. We're going to see our moms and dads saved, our loved ones saved. Everybody we come in contact with, we're going to try our best to win them to God. Oh, God, help us to quit the fighting and the bickering. Help us, Lord, to love one another. You know, I look through the Bible and nowhere, nowhere does God tell you to hate anybody. If there's anybody that you hate, your heart's not right with God. I don't care what they've done to you or against you. Jesus said if your enemy comes to you and asks you for something, he said, give it to him. He said, you will heap coals of fire upon his head. Love. Let me tell you something. Love will break down all other rims, all other avenues. No matter what you try, you can always love your enemy into loving you and cause him to repent for the wrong that he's done to you. The Bible said if we do evil for evil, then evil will never part from our home. We must love one another, all of us, the whole church. I, don't, I mean the Baptist needs to love the Pentecost. The Pentecost needs to love the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ needs to love the Methodists. And we all need to love each other. We need to put aside our thoughts and logics of denominationalism, and we need to get one mind and one vision. And that's heaven's our home and Jesus is our God. And if we don't repent and we don't do what's right, then there's no way we can expect God to allow us to come to the kingdom of heaven. In heaven there will not be a million man mark. The blacks and the whites will not fight. The Indians will not fight with the white man. When we get to heaven, we'll all be one. The way God always wanted it. God never looked upon earth and saw color. We all bleed. We all have hearts. We all have feelings. I don't care what you say your goal is. God wants us to love everybody. Love each other. Love. That's what God wants. God doesn't need the ACLU or the Civil Liberties Union or any other thing in heaven to keep things going because love will cause people to dwell with each other. Can you say amen? We thank you today for watching the telecast. We thank you today for the blessings of God. We're so glad that you tuned in. We love you. Keep watching us. Write us and let us know that you enjoy the broadcast. Remember, if you'll go with God, the Lord will go with you in Jesus' name.